All right, are you ready for the next level? I love to learn about analytics way more than most other subjects. I think ads and analytics will always remain my favorites. So, ah, let's get to level four, the Google Tech Manager level. Um, here is the question, the primary incentive. I want to measure my user flow within my product. You can do all kinds of stuff with Google Tech Manager, but it's particularly helpful to measure the user flow in your product and to see what people are actually doing. So what is the Google Tag Manager, you might ask? Yeah, I saw it, but I think it is too unrelated. Yeah, I'm gonna answer that a little bit later, yeah? So the Google Tag Manager is like this, this placeholder, this container where you can put in all of your analytics scripts. The Google Analytics pixel, the Facebook pixel, your LinkedIn tag, your Twitter tag, and you can manage all of those within Google Tag Manager. Your developer has to implement it once and then they have to do a lot less than before. Yeah? It is also one of the smoothest solutions if you have a single page application yeah, and everything is on the same website. The normal Google Analytics is confused. Google Tag Manager to the rescue. So what do we define here in Google Tag Manager? We define the tag, the script, yeah, which can be either the base pixel or a specific event. And we have to define a trigger. When is this event going to fire? In this scenario, we have an event called um, in the category word, um, now go to um, workshop LP and a person clicked on the download overview. This is only supposed to happen when a certain trigger uh, is fired, which is called similarly click on linked download overview. Yeah? And now I get all of those events. I can actually see what people are doing on my website. And you can see this in this area of Google Analytics under behavior. This time, not content because content was just page views. We are now interested in what people are doing on the page views. This is where we go to events. And there we see a list of all the events that uh, your Google Analytics has been receiving. I would check this area because if you're, for example, using a shop like Shopify or a plugin like Hotjar, those plugins or add-ons to your website will already send a lot of events to this event segment. So here you can see that on my website, of course, there are a lot of event register site because I implemented on Eventbrite and Eventbrite is so kind to tell me, oh yeah, 389 uh, total events, event registrations have happened in this time. And it believes it is from 344 users. That is what unique events signifies. And the, it always sends like a conversion value with that. And that is not important right now. So just the number of events is interesting. So here I can see uh, how many people have clicked on uh, discover all topics, download overview, learn more, uh, schedule a call, new meetup numbers, new teachable enrollments. I can see new Calendly um, scheduled call events. And this really helps me to understand what are people doing within my product, which is going to events, joining the live stream, uh, coming to a workshop, registering a ticket, interacting on Teachable, interacting on Discord. Yeah, And this is incredibly helpful, but of course we are now definitely in the advanced area. Yeah? And the step from just looking at pages to events is a very important one. It's very worthwhile because now you can suddenly see what is actually going on. Other things you should now start to take a look at if you're interested in your, in your user flow is something that is already available on level one, but it is only significant here in these stages. Active users. How many people are returning on a daily, weekly, bi-weekly or monthly basis? This is what 
investors will ask you most frequently if you are in a retention-based business, if you have an app or if you have a software as a service model, model where you really want to have people who stay for a long while. We get this. We even get cohort analysis. So what does that mean? So on, uh, on this side, you see um, those rows and each row represents a whole week. And the first row tell, tells us everybody who joined this website from November 12th to November 18th, those were 16,000 people. And how many are left after one week? Only 3.8% were recognized after one week. Only 2.8 one week later. So we see a very steep drop off um, in the retention rate. So this is an online shop example, and we might not expect people to return again and again. But imagine this would look like uh, your business would look like this, and you have a Netflix model with a with a monthly subscription. You would be dead within a month. Yeah, and now you optimize your product, and you can now see the differences in your website and your product week over week, and how this cohort is developing over time. Of course, it takes a lot of time until it's full. But um, I think this is, uh, this is a very, very valuable resources if you are in a, in a business model that relies on your users to come back again and again. And of course, on the side of the e-commerce businesses, we now get a much more detailed shopping behavior overview. Uh, you can tell through Google Tag Manager, for example, or by custom coding it, or the chef just provides it, you can tell Google Analytics exactly, ah oh, yeah, these are people, those are my general people, but when they have visited this type of website, they have landed on a product website. This is the product view area. Yeah? And then, so this signifies an add to cart event. And now Google can tell you exactly where do people are dropping off. And we can see um, that the product discovery is quite good. No, it's actually quite bad. Only 18% of all sessions ever see a product website. Only 35% of them add something to the cart. And only 9% of the people who added something to the cart went to the checkout. Yeah? Don't worry if those numbers do not align all the time. For example, it could be that the checkout session is not um, a mandatory step for every user. Yeah, so it might be skipped. How do you get to this view? Let me show you. Um, if you go to Google Analytics and well, let me go back, it's here. I have my Google Analytics open here. You can go to um, conversion, goals, no, not goals, but e-commerce. Yeah? And in the e-commerce overview tab, you get your shopping cart behavior. And here you have your shop behavior, your checkout behavior, your product behavior. And this is where you can discover the charts I've been showing you. Yeah? All right, so there are definite benefits of um, going one level deeper. What else can we get? Here we have something that is called assisted conversions. Let me get out of the way. So assistant conversions answers the questions, what if people did not check out, let's say they, they press on a Facebook uh, post link, they go to your website, they leave again, they search some, something, come back to your store and buy. Who will get the so-called attribution for that purchase? That would be Google search, yeah? Because the last thing that people did, the last click to your website was search and not Facebook, who was, who was the initial first contact in this scenario. This is the question that is being answered. How many assisted conversions have come through another channel? Let's look at Google Ads here, Google CPC, that is line six. 1,400 assisted conversion with a value of 25,000 that we would not have seen otherwise. If we would just looked at the last click attribution, which is the part source medium above, we would have only seen a conversion value of 15,000 and we would have, sorry, I'm in the, uh, yeah, a conversion value of 2,000 would be direct clicks 
but they are 3,900 euro for, for Google ads that are assisted and it's it played an important role in the journey of the customer to convert. And how do you get that view or was it an old question? I think that was an old question, right? Yeah, the, the one that, is, that was in there. I think Flavio just joined. All right, so now you can start seeing that going deeper into analytics can start to answer questions that are more subtle, yeah? How important is my social media or my newsletter compared to my campaigns, my paid advertising? How does SEO contribute in monetary terms? And this whole topic is under the umbrella name of attribution, which is absolutely a level five and beyond topic. Yeah, there is a complete section within Google Analytics that is only concerned with the question, what percentage of uh, for example, of a purchase, do I give Facebook, Google, email in a given campaign? Yeah. So now you can answer questions like, what are people actually doing? That is events. That is the most important thing, I think, in this area that you can get. Then for your retention model people, how sticky is my product? And are my product generations actually improving from version one to two? Do the cohorts stay longer in my product or do I keep losing everybody every month? Yeah. And you can now see through the funnel visualization, like in the shopping cart example, where do people actually drop off? Yeah, and I think this now makes clear how, how powerful Google Analytics can, can get. And this does not only concern Google Analytics, it's, this is also, um, for Facebook, for Mixpanel, whatever analytics tool you like.